underneath that water there that we need to coach those behaviors, those traits. Let's coach to those things, attitude, effort, and our response. So man, at, at the end of the day, James, bottom line is we've got a really good window right here. So when we roll out of this, it's not, let's get back to practice. Man, that, that quarantine sucked. It's man, we took advantage of it and it was awesome. And now we have high performing human beings on our courts and on our fields and our, in our, our locker rooms that we can continue to coach up to help them perform better in sport. But most importantly, can help them avoid future heartache of identity crisis, lack of structure, lack of instant feedback, lack of confidence, and being stuck in mediocrity in life when they used to have hype, you know, they, they've reached their potential in sport, and now a lot of us struggle in life after. Let's help bridge that gap. We can do that through coaching and through our leadership. Man, that's, that's powerful stuff. So now let's let's transition a little bit to, uh, I had so much notes. Uh, <laughs> good stuff, dude. I knew you would bring it. Okay, let's go with what's going on right now. And I, I asked you to stop at 35 after. It's oh. 35 after. You're invited back. <laughs> that's like the number one thing as a speaker well you know maybe don't curse on stage unless you're gary vanderchick but like the number two thing is like end on time <laughs> you're good dude okay now um let's go with some real practical stuff the stuff that you're talking about being on state or being on the court being being there by the pool whatever coaches can't be there right now how can coaches help athletes who are transitioning out of sport who maybe didn't have their last season Mm. And how can a coach be there for them to guide them through this process? Yeah, uh, first and foremost, we have to have the mentality that we're not done coaching these, these athletes. Like the, the sport and the leadership and the, and the coaching continues. Because so many athletes right now are feeling cut off. I, I didn't even get my final season. I didn't get to say goodbye. And I don't have my coach anymore. I don't have my team. They feel pushed aside. Because the, the, the sophomores and the, the juniors and the freshmen in high school and college respects are still getting together, right? They're doing Zoom meetings, they're doing stuff. The yeah. seniors feel cut off. Uh, so let's talk to those, right? The, the seniors, we, we gotta make sure that they're, they're not over with. And so we can still support them through our leadership and getting them involved. What I love that I've got a couple of programs doing is they're bringing their seniors back to help lead their Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. They're helping leading, um, they're writing emails, kind of pump up emails for their team. They're helping them, they're helping them um, create workouts for the team. They're right. putting their former, like their seniors, right, in leadership positions, kind of yeah. a, a coach, coach athlete type type regard, and asking them to go ahead and lead the team. And they're giving them themes, like let's make the theme of, uh, of this week, uh, you know, independence. What can you do to teach our athletes how to be independent? And giving them a, an actionable item. Go out and do this this week. Right. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of... There's a lot of possibilities in here where um, I did this thing where it's, I write up on the board, opportunity is nowhere, but it's all like one word. And so I'm like, what do you see? And some people can see opportunity is now here. And other people see opportunity is nowhere. And I see this as opportunity is now here, where we are going from, as coaches, from a team building to a person building situation. And I always teach, even in, in normal times, you know, pre-pandemic, where seniors who are towards the end of their season and the end of their maybe playing career, that a coach would invite them to kind of watch as the coach pulls back the curtain. This is how I watch game film. This is how I select who's going to start. This is what I'm looking for during tryouts. And just give these athletes an opportunity to see what their leader, what their, their person, the, the person that they admire does on a daily basis. And so many athletes leave high school or college not really understanding why coaches made the decisions that they made. And it's, I think it's such an important opportunity for coaches to be like, look, uh, right now, uh, since we're not playing, let's focus on building you, you know, let's do it. Let's have a watch party and do game film. And I'll show you what it is that I, I look down. Do you have any suggestions uh, on themes that a coach could do if they did have practice maybe two days a week for a half an hour on a virtual platform like zoom? You know, I, uh, I'll go into uh, colleges and 
you know, NCAA has restrictions on how much time they can have with their athletes. So coaches are always, you know, they're, they're losing time with their athletes to begin with. And then they got someone like me coming in saying, hey, why don't you take an hour out of your week and get off the field and get in the classroom and start talking about character building. Let's start talking so about good. behaviors. Yeah. So good. And man, it's like pulling the teeth. Oh, I can't give up an hour. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do drills. Right. I got the cones set up. They got to run. They got to do agility drills. Like, oh yeah. gosh, no, you don't. <laughs> and I tell them you can't afford not to take that hour <laughs> off and go develop your people. Mm -hmm. And so we have the time now to do that. Yeah. And it's, it's uh, when we're doing zoom meetings, I, I really um, in, imploring coaches to start to have particular themes, right? Let's not throw too much at once. I'm a big fan of acting analyzing and adjusting accordingly. So let's take massive action on a particular topic. Let's analyze that. So we get our team together. Let's go out and explore. Let's just take something like gratitude. Let's be grateful for the fact that, you know what, we lost our season, but man, we got our health. We've got each other. We've got our families. We have those things. Yeah. Where can you go out and express into the world and maybe document it a level of gratitude? Once you send that to the team, maybe the group, group, text or send it via email or whatever hub that uh, teams are dealing with, how you expressed your gratitude. Yeah. And then we can all get together and we can analyze that. Hey, how, oh, look up. And it creates uh, ideas for each other. Oh, and learning from each other. Well, each other. Like that's such a great thing. I mean, we make these decisions and this is how we're going to do it. And it's like, no, you, that's good. And, and when it stops working for you, you can do something else and learn from the collective genius of everybody who is on the team, everybody who's in the call, you know, not, not everybody's going to do things the same way. Exactly. Yes, exactly. So tell us about the programs that you have. You said you had a math or, you know, I read that you had a mastermind that you have different programs. Like, tell me about what you do. Yeah. So really you know, my work with, with former athletes and I actually, you know, I work with a lot of coaches, a lot of coaches who were saying, Hey, you know, I, uh, I love coaching. It's what I do. Maybe I teach at the same time, uh, but uh, doesn't, you know, I, I don't pay. Uh, I don't, I don't get paid the way I want to get paid. I want to do something on the side. I love my sport. How can I you know, develop something uh, that, that's aligned with my passion? So a lot of my work really is taking former athletes and, and helping them find fulfillment in life after sports. I do a lot of focus on business and career. I do a lot of focus on uh, health and, and wellness. So I've got, uh, in fact, Monday starts my, my, uh, my next boot camp. I do a four week boot camp every, every four weeks. Boot and camp. Yeah, tell me about it. Tell me we're about it. athlete boot camp, man. We're bringing we bring uh, former athletes together, and I take them through group coaching. We also do some one on one coaching, and what we're doing is we're we're basically helping them identify their former athlete brand, uh, their messaging, right? Understanding who they are. Let's remember, gang, uh, we're we're not athletes, and we never were. That's what we did. That's not who we are. So I help athletes kind of break free of that, break up with it, and I begin to identify who they really are. And then mm -hmm. we start to align. Right? Maybe what they want to do in, in life or in business or in their career. We start to bring those together. And it's all actionable. Every week's got actionable items. So by the end of the four weeks, we have deployed a message. We have deployed some next steps to actually put ourselves out there and align with who we are, what we're passionate about, with what we want to do to find some, some fulfillment. That's good. That's coming up on Monday. So uh, I'm looking at the people who are in here and, and the people aren't talking very much but um oh let's see yun said acting analyzing and adjust that's good yes. i see my friend dave maselli on here um so i have a question that he might enjoy is uh how can athletic directors create a a transition program where people who are who are athletes student athletes who are transitioning out of sport to move on um is there something that he could focus or, or someone else could focus on to help with that transition Man, absolutely. And athletic directors, you know, I, I love you all. And the biggest challenge I have with athletic departments right now is their their answer to helping with transition is, okay, let's get let's get athletes an internship, or let's get them, uh, you know, focusing on colleges. Let's get them focusing on kind of the uh, some a trade they can get into. It's all just this again, the X's and O's, the technical and tactical work. So before we do all that, that's important. We want to get to that. Before we have to address the human being, you have former athletes right now. In fact, one of my NCAA FBS Division One Power Five conference clients said, For years, we have been measuring the wrong data. 
And they've been going into homes of potential student athletes saying, our graduation rate is 92%. That's what they were measuring. What they've come to realize is it's the wrong thing because yeah. they have student athletes coming back, waving their diploma going, what next coach? <laughs> now what? So yeah. they're struggling with this, uh, with this process. And what they need to do is start to put some, uh, understand that this is, this is trauma. You have a young person yes. who at the age of four has been doing something every year, every season, year after year after year. When I retired at 20, whatever, 27, 85% of my life, I was an athlete. That's what I knew. That's what people told. People didn't call me to ask me about geometry, ask me about uh, career advice. They called me to go, hey, can I get some tickets? Hey, are you on ESPN? Hey, what's the next step? Dude, I'm so happy. It was all about sport, sport, sport. And when that ended, there was no calls coming. People weren't calling me. I wasn't wanted. And so we have to make sure that these athletes are going through some trauma right now. There's going to be, in fact, there's a, yes. there's a lot of research on athlete identity addiction right now. We, as, stu as athletes, we are taught, well, as students, a, a general non-athlete student is taught to, hey, go explore everything around you. Go explore music and, and travel and art and all these different things. Like, go explore it all. As athletes, it's, hey, you need to focus on your sport. In season, now off season, weight training, focus. Don't let these, everything else is a distraction. Focus on sport. And so now you have athletes who have been focusing on just that, rolling out going, who am I? I've identified with this thing for so long. So athletic directors, we have to address the identity crisis that they're all gonna be going through. Some much, some like me, much longer than others, uh, but the, it's, it's a reality. We need to address that. We need to break up with the athlete identity and start to identify who they are, who they are intrinsically. That would be a fantastic first step to address that, that trauma. Yeah, so let's see, I have a question. Let's see, Chris. Chris, are, are you... Uh... Are you able to ask that question? I'm trying something new on here and, and trying to get another yes, voice up, on Chris? here. I might, hey, I might have. You? Oh, there you go, Chris, all you. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, what advice would you give to your younger self? Um, and fantastic, both of you, uh, absolutely superb. Thank you both. Oh, Chris, man, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for the question. Uh, yes, my younger self. My, my son is an eighth grader and he came home with his eighth grade yearbook. And he just was curious. And he's like, hey, dad, you still have your eighth grade yearbook? Like, you know, I think I just might have it. So I dug around, haven't looked at this thing in, in 30 years. I open it up and a lot has changed, right? And his weird bike, everything is hashtag this, this. Mine was KIT. Here's my phone number. <laughs> <laughs> have a great summer. Have a good summer. <laughs> right. Thanks but for the math question for the math answers. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, but James, man, there was a theme. And Chris, there was a theme throughout my yearbook. And it was, hey, Cletus, can't wait to see you in the NBA. Hey, Cletus, you're, you're, you know, you're, the NFL is calling you. Hey, Cletus, mm -hmm. remember us little people, verbatim, in my yearbook. I even had teachers who had said, Cletus, man, I, I can't wait to say I knew you way back when. Uh, Cletus, make sure you save some tickets for me uh, when you make it pro. You take a 14-year-old a who's reading, and I, again, I'm looking at this going, oh, my gosh, I cannot believe this. A 14 year old, I mean, my head must have been just swelling like crazy. Everyone is telling me, the marketplace is telling me who I am. What I would tell my younger self is go deep, go deep in self awareness, understanding who I am, not letting others or the marketplace dictate and tell me who I am. I needed to understand that for myself. And it took me till my, I was in my 30s to, to really you know, dive into that. Everything in my program is self awareness first. Who are you? You're not an athlete. You're not this thing. That's what you did. Who are you? So God, I would, my younger self, man, please, Cletus, invest in self-awareness, please. Yeah. Great question. I love that. Like you, you're not an athlete. You're a, you're a human that plays sports and that that's how you, uh, you know, maybe that's how you express yourself. You express yourself in sports. I love that. And I'll tell you this, James, real quick. When the day, and now that, you know, we didn't have social media when I was around and I just, I envy and I don't envy these, these young athletes who have social media because now you have opponents who are tweeting something maybe, you know, negative about their game the night before or what have you. And without a strong sense of self-awareness, we're believing that stuff. Now all of a sudden doubt creeps in. Oh man, the, 
the community is saying, you know, I, I dropped the ball in the end zone. Everyone's ragging on me. You know, without a strong sense of self-awareness, we carry that doubt and that confidence with us, even in the life after sport. Man, that's good stuff. Well, I'm going to open it up to anybody else has any questions. Would love to, uh, you know, people are sending me some messages and stuff, but uh, people are too nice. You're too kind, but um, thank you. Uh, I, I think, I think we're good. I don't think we have any other questions, man. And you have a podcast and uh, if anybody is, is into podcasts, I highly recommend listening to it. Uh, Cletus, and, and sometimes you don't even have a guest. You just yeah, kind of so rant. I love yeah, that stuff. Like I mean, that. those are so good. And then once you get going, I know for me, like with Unleash the Athlete, I, I'll, I'll turn on the microphone and I, I don't really know where it's going to go. And I'm just start talking and then you just get going. You're like, oh, I should, I should end this soon. <laughs> <laughs> you get up on your soapbox and you just want to help out and stuff. But um, is there anything that uh, you want to leave the group with? Yeah, gang, you know, I, I am, uh, again, I'm truly grateful for, for the work that you're doing. And, you know, there, there are millions of, of athletes that are going to roll out of sport in the next 12 months. You've got those who have lost their season, those who have decided to, to quit and move on. And we've got a short window with them. We have a really short window. And sports is such an, an important development zone for, for human beings. And let's take advantage of it. Let's not miss that opportunity to really thrive in who we are as, as coaches and as leaders, to really maximize the time that we have with these young athletes. And understand it, it, uh, it, 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 it doesn't end, right? Let's continue on and, and be supportive for our athletes through, throughout their lifetime because they're really going to need it. They're really going to need you, coach. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't end. Some of my favorite things is when I get the the phone calls and coach, will you come to my wedding? Yes. You know, yes. Yeah, no, that's the call. <laughs> we want. A, it's just those things. I, I, one of my, my football coaches in high school, when I first graduated, I went back to and coached and I said, Hey coach, how's the team this year? He said, I don't know, James. I, I, I really don't know. And I was like, Oh, some struggles. And he goes, no, I, I won't know for about 10 years. And I was like, oh, I got you. I got what you're saying. <laughs> okay. So if, he goes, yeah, once they're, they're men of their community and, and, you know, and they're good husbands and they're good fathers and they're, they're, they're just, they're giving. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And so, you know, it, it, it's just so great to be a coach and be able to have a positive influence on these athletes. And I just, I really appreciate what you're doing and you're, you're serving a very underserved population. And so, you know, blessings to you, brother. And I just, I just pray that, you know, God keeps you safe and that you just keep on with the passion and the energy that you have with everybody. Thanks for being on today. Dude, it is my pleasure. Thank, thank you. And thank you to the coaches. And if I can be of help in the future, please let me know. I'm at Cletus Coffee on all social channels, CletusCoffee.com please reach out. Happy to help. Get after it. See you later, everybody. Enjoy.